Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome back to this week's portfolio update. I like to show my portfolio once a week, somewhere around then, as I believe that sets me apart from the other stock YouTubers out there, and that I show my receipts. And I gotta say, this week, this past week, it started off so well. I mean, if we take a look at the Dow uh, on the, basically last week as I'm filming this, Monday was so strong. Tuesday was really, really good. It gave us hope and all that stuff. Wednesday and Thursday, it seemed like it was it was fighting it, but we we might have broken through. And then Friday, y'all know what happened Friday. And yeah, I got absolutely wrecked. We are back below 20%. Like earlier this week, I was so happy because I thought that I was actually going to be able to perform to, to report a gain. And hey, we're actually doing well. But no, oh no, the market once again played with my emotions. Now, if I was doing options or anything like that or anything short term, yeah, I'd be a little afraid right now. But since I'm a long term investor and the only thing I do is buy these stocks and wait, I don't have to do a single thing. And that's kind of the hardest part of being a long term investor, because, see, in my, my day job, I'm a network, I'm a network engineer. And part of what I part of my instincts is whenever I see a problem, I like to try to fix it. And so whenever I see my portfolio down like this, I like to get in there, try to, you know, talk myself into doing something about it. But I mean, the best thing you should do for a long-term investor, as long as you have stocks that you think are quality investments, is to do nothing. And so I have to fight that urge every single week and just sit there, buy positions as I see fit, and then, and then just wait. And if you look at my portfolio, you will see that I have not sold anything. I, I have no plans to sell any of my positions. I'm going to continue buying and holding, as I said. Now, normally... So my strategy is every month I put in three grand into the portfolio. And then every week, every Monday, I put 300 bucks into a growth stock. And every Wednesday or Thursday, I put 300 bucks into a value stock. Now, normally, over the past several weeks, I've been pouring money into Google. However, I took a bit of a break this week and I put money into Palantir. And then as far as my, my value stock, it's SCHD all the way. And I have no plans of changing that even though a whole bunch of other stocks like value stocks look very, very attractive, like a at and Verizon, uh, Walgreens, like all these look, look very, very good. And especially Intel, like with the price it's at right now. Yeah. I mean, they all look very attractive, but for now I'm going to be focusing on SCHD. Now you will note that Jivo is my worst performing position. Now, if I had plans on selling Jivo this year, like if that was the strat, yeah, I'd be in a lot of trouble right now, but I have no plans of selling Jivo this year. When I bought Jivo a year ago, I mean, at the time I bought it, I mean, this was a 2025 at the earliest stock, and I had no plans of selling until 2030. So I was planning on holding this stock until for at least for the next eight years. Over those eight years, like Jivo is going to become a very important player in the U.S. economy. Let me show you. Now, say what you will about the Biden administration. I know I have a lot to say that I'm not going to repeat on this channel. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that as, um, as of last year, uh, they are trying to uh, produce 3 billion gallons of SAF by 2030. And Now, I'm not going to read this. You can go here and read this if you want to. But the, point, the fact of the matter is, is that the U.S. government, as of right now, is pushing very, very hard for... SAF to become a thing, a real thing. Now, according to this article from Simple Flying, a ton of money, $1.45 trillion, needs to exchange hands by 2050 in order this, for this to become a reality. Now, this article mainly focuses on Shell, but there is one part I want to talk about. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Now, I'm not going to read this. You can pause and read this if you want to. But the gist is that basically there is limited supply and as of right now, there is little demand. However, that the that, that demand is going to shoot up dramatically over the next couple of years as it gets closer to as it gets closer to 2030. And the supply, I mean, right now there is a limited supply. And in my eyes, that spells opportunity. And not only has Jivo risen to the opportunity, but a bunch of companies have already signed on and have pledged money uh, in order for Jivo to make SAF happen. As of August, I know this is January, but trust me, go to the website. It'll it'll make a lot of sense. But as of the August uh, presentation, 10 billion. Now some of it is with gasoline, but 10 billion is has been pledged 
by all these high profile uh, airlines, Delta, American Airlines, Surfigura, British Airways, SAS, Alaska Airlines. A lot of money has been pledged to Jibo for them to provide SAF. Now, the contract doesn't go into um, uh, fruition until 2025 when Jibo builds the net zero one plant. But the fact of the matter is, is that the money is there. The money is already on the table. All Jibo has to do is build the plant and get it done. And so far, since I've invested in Jibo, they have shown they, they haven't shown any signs that this is going to be delayed. Everything that they've they've uh, they promised has come out on time. And so, honestly, yeah, I think this is money on the table. So, who knows if the SAF challenge that the Biden administration put out is going to last past the Biden administration? But it's here now, and it's probably going to stay for the next few to several years. And so the way I see it, Jivo is, is in a very good position to profit off of it. But anyways, take care, have a great day, and eat your vegetables.